Today we going to discuss the topic, Pathology of Asthma, by, Professor, Saminatan, Kyra Hanam, contact mail id, prof.samiacademy, at, gmail.com. Next slide, Definition and Meaning of Asthma Continues, an expert panel of the National Institutes of Health, the National Asthma Education and Prevention Program, NEP has provided the following working definition of asthma. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways in which many cells and cellular elements play a role in acute bronchoconstriction, in particular, mast cells, eosinophils, T-lymphocytes, macrophages, neutrophils, and epithelial cells. In a normal person's bronchial tube, the muscle of the bronchi are relaxed and allowing easy airflow and no issue in breathing. But, in the case of asthma patients, the bronchial tube is inflamed and filled with mucus. Also, the muscle of the bronchi is tight and thicker, which impedes airflow and create difficulty in breathing. Next slide, key facts about asthma. Asthma affected an estimated 262 million people in 2019 and caused 455,000 deaths by W. H. O. Asthma is responsible for more than 2 million emergency department visits and more than 500,000 hospitalizations each year. Asthma is the most common chronic disease of childhood, affecting more than one child in 20. In adults, asthma is 35% more common in women than in men. In children, however, the disease affects twice as many boys as girls. Approximately 17% of all adult onset asthma cases are related to occupational exposures. Currently, 8.4% of persons in the United States have asthma as compared with 4.3% of the population worldwide, and both numbers are on the rise. The average annual asthma prevalence is higher in children, 9.5%, than in adults. 7.7%. Avoiding asthma triggers can also help to reduce asthma symptoms. Most asthma-related deaths occur in low and lower middle-income countries, where underdiagnosis and undertreatment are a challenge. Next slide, Agents and Events Triggering Asthma, 1. Respiratory Infection, Respiratory Syncytial Virus, RSV, Rhinovirus, Influenza, Paroinfluenza, Mycoplasma pneumonia, 2. Allergens, airborne pollens, grass, trees, weeds, house dust mite, animal dander, cockroaches, fungal spores, 3. Environment, cold air, fog, ozone, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, tobacco smoke, wood smoke, 4. Emotions, anxiety, stress, laughter, 5. Exercise, particularly in a cold, dry climate, 6, drugs, preservatives, aspirin, cyclooxygenase inhibitors like N, S, A, I, D, known as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, sulfites, benzalkonium chloride, and beta blockers, 7, occupational stimuli, bakers, flour dust, farmers, hay mold, spice and enzyme workers printers, Arabic gum, chemical workers, azo dyes, anthraquinone, ethylenediamine, toluene disassociates, polyvinyl chloride, plastics, rubber, and woodworkers, formaldehyde, western cedar, dimethylethanolamine, anhydrides. Next slide, contrasting features of the two major types of asthma, the feature contrasting with extrinsic asthma, intrinsic asthma, 1. Age at onset, in childhood in extrinsic asthma, in adult in intrinsic asthma, 2. Personal, family history, commonly present in extrinsic asthma, absent in intrinsic asthma, 3. Preceding allergic illness, atopy, present, example, rhinitis, urticaria, eczema, in extrinsic asthma, absent in intrinsic asthma. 4. Allergens present dust, pollens, danders etc etc, non in intrinsic asthma, 5, drug hypersensitivity, non, in extrinsic asthma, present, usually to aspirin, in intrinsic asthma, 6, serum I, G, E level elevated, in extrinsic asthma, normal in intrinsic asthma, 
7. Associated chronic bronchitis, nasal polyps, absent in extrinsic asthma, present in intrinsic asthma, 8. Emphysema, unusual in extrinsic asthma, common in intrinsic asthma. Next slide, acute asthmatic episode. 1. Edema of mucous membrane. 2. Mucous plug. 3. Bronchospasm. Muscle contraction. 4. Obstructed bronchiole. Next slide, comparing the important parameter in various stages of asthma. The five parameters, like 1. Symptom frequency, 2. Nighttime awakenings, 3. Severities, 4. Lung capacity, 5. Inhaler use is compared with four stages of asthma in stage 1, mild intermittent asthma, one symptom frequency, two days a week or less often, two nighttime awakenings, wake a person two or fewer times each month, three severities, symptoms will not interfere with regular activities for lung capacity, forced expiratory volume, theft, 80 percentage or more of normal values, five inhaler use, short acting beta agonist, Saba, twice a week. In stage 2, mild persistent asthma, one symptom frequency, more often than twice a week but not every day. Two nighttime awakenings, wake a person three or four times a month. Three severities, symptoms may have a minor impact on regular activities. Four lung capacity, forced expiratory volume, F, E, V, more or equivalent to 80 percentage. Five inhaler use. Short acting beta agonist, S, A, B, A, thrice a week but not daily. In stage 3, moderate persistent asthma, one symptom frequency, symptoms will occur daily. Two nighttime awakenings, wake a person more often than once a week but not every night. Three severities, symptoms will limit regular activities somewhat for lung capacity. Forced expiratory volume, F, E, V. Lung capacity test tends to be more than 60 and less than 80 percentage. 5 inhaler use, intermediate dose short acting beta agonist S, A, B, A, and corticosteroids inhaler daily basis. In stage 4, severe persistent asthma, one symptom frequency, symptoms will arise throughout the day. 2 nighttime awakenings, wake a person every night. 3 severities. Symptoms will significantly limit regular activities for lung capacity. Forced expiratory volume F, E, V lung capacity test tends to be less than 60 percentage 5 inhaler use, high dose short acting beta agonist, S, A, B, A, and corticosteroids several times a day. Next slide, risk factors and complications of asthma, first, risk factor. Having a blood relative with asthma, such as a parent or sibling. Having another allergic condition, such as atopic dermatitis A which causes red, itchy skin A or hay fever A which causes a runny nose, congestion and itchy eyes. Being overweight, being a smoker. Exposure to passive smoking. Exposure to exhaust fumes or other types of pollution. Exposure to occupational triggers such as chemicals used in farming, hairdressing and manufacturing. Second, complications, signs and symptoms that interfere with sleep, work and other activities, sick days from work or school during asthma flare-ups, a permanent narrowing of the tubes that carry air to and from your lungs, bronchial tubes, affects how well you can breathe, emergency room visits and hospitalizations for severe asthma attacks. Side effects from long-term use of some medications used to stabilize severe asthma. Pathophysiology of asthma, interleukin-13 is a central regulator in IgE synthesis, goblet cell hyperplasia, mucus hypersecretion, airway hyperresponsiveness. In the lung, IL-13 regulates eosinophilic inflammation, mucus secretion, and airway hyperresponsiveness and central mediator of allergic asthma. Interleukin-4 has an important role in regulating antibody production, hematopoiesis and inflammation, and the development of effector T-cell responses. This IL-13 and IL-4 activate the B-cell, 
B cells play a central role in allergy and allergen tolerance through the production of immunoglobulin IgE blocking antibodies. IgE binds to the high affinity IgE receptor in the master cell, also known as FC epsilon re, which is the high affinity receptor for the FC region of immunoglobulin IgE. Mast cell activation through FC epsilon ri is central to the pathogenesis. The mast cell, FC epsilon ri, IgE and allergen complex activation mediate the release of histamine, leukotrans and cytokines, which leads to early responses like bronchospasm, edema, and airflow obstruction. The late response like airway inflammation, airway obstruction and airway hyperresponsiveness. This collective effect is known as asthma. Next slide, the three groups of cell-mediated asthma pathology. The first group, leukotrans C4, D4, and E4 are extremely potent mediators that cause prolonged bronchoconstriction, increased vascular permeability and mucus secretion, and acetylcholine, released from intrapulmonary motor nerves, which can cause airway smooth muscle constriction by directly stimulating muscarinic receptors. A second group, histamine, which causes potent bronchoconstrictor prostaglandin D2, which causes bronchoconstriction and vasodilatation, platelet activating factor which causes aggregation of platelets and release of histamine and serotonin from their granules. These mediators might prove vital in other chronic or non-allergic asthma types. Final and third group, these include numerous cytokines, such as interleukins 1, tumor necrosis factor, and interleukins 6, some of which exist in a preformed state within the mast cell granules, chemokins, for example, eutaxin, neuropeptides, nitric oxide, bradykinin, and endothelins. It is thus clear that multiple mediators contribute to the acute asthmatic response. Moreover, the composition of this mediator soup might differ among different individuals or types of asthma. Next slide, steps of inflammatory process in asthma, 1. Triggering of asthma, inhaled pollen, allergens or antigen, elicit a Th2 dominated response favoring I, G, E production and dosinophil recruitment. 2. Immediate phase, usually in minutes, antigen A, G, induced crosslinking of I, G. E receptors on mast cells. These cells release performed mediators. The mediators induce bronchospasm, increased vascular permeability, and mucus production. 3. Late phase, usually in hours, the arrival of recruited leukocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils lymphocytes and monocytes signals the initiation of the late phase of asthma and causes damage to the epithelium granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. Next slide, normal versus asthma airway, comparison of a normal bronchus with that in a person with asthma. Note the accumulation of mucus in the bronchial lumen resulting from an increase in the number of mucus secreting goblet cells in the mucosa and hypertrophy of submucosal glands. In addition, there is intense chronic inflammation due to the recruitment of eosinophils, macrophages, and other inflammatory cells. The basement membrane underlying the mucosal epithelium is thickened, and there is hypertrophy and hyperplasia of smooth muscle cells. Thank you for your attention. Further information, kindly contact profsamiacademy at gmail.com. Disclaimer. This channel does not promote or encourage any illegal activities and all contents provided by this channel are meant for educational purposes only. Any copyrighted material on these slides is included as fair use for educational purposes only. It will be removed at the request of copyright owners.